So how's that cabin coming along? Cottage barber. <laughs> Cottage cabin, whatever. Oh, hello, how are you? I'm just having coffee with my brother Mark here. And Mark, I've been noticing you've been eyeing up my cooker here. Yeah, I have. That's a pretty nice piece of work you did there, Barbara. Would you like me to make one for your cabin? My cottage, yes. I would really like you to do that. Fine. I'll tell you what. Uh, you and I and the viewers, I'll take you into the front room and we will make one together. How about that? Now, did you realize that the body of the cougar was a pop bottle? The body of the cougar is a pop bottle. No, I did not realize that. Okay, can you kind of imagine it? Okay. Imagine that as a cougar. Yeah. Well, no, I can't, Barbara. Okay, Honestly, and then this is going to be the head. Okay. So we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to stick that into here. And that, let's get that in there. Ooh, careful. Yeah, I know. And that's going to go in there and that's going to be the head. Okay. All right. So what I'd like you to do is tape this head on here, just with, with this. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do to make this cougar a little more fluffy is we're going to actually, um, Bonnie, can I get you to do me a favor? And in the kitchen, in the knife set there, my scissors. Yeah. So we're going to wrap this uh, around just to make this cougar a little more fluffier. Mm-hmm. All right. Put some body to it. Put some put some muscle to it, yeah. Okay. So, we don't need scissors. I just ripped it. Okay, so I need some tape there. Which this or Yeah, that tape? tape will be good for now. So we're gonna do this and we're just gonna make it more fluffy. All right. And we're gonna put this around here. Bonnie, it's okay, I, I'm just, I don't need the scissors right now. So what made you decide to do a cougar? Well, did I, don't, did I ask you to make me a cougar? No, you didn't, but I thought, you know, you are such an outdoorsy type of person, and I already made you a deer for your cabin. Yes, and dunk, I, dunk in the deer. You dunk in yeah. the deer, and I thought, well, you've got a bear, you've got, you've got a few things. I thought, well, you know what? You sometimes say that there's people have sighted cougars out there. Yes. And I thought, well, that would be a good one. Mm -hmm. And um, I like cats. And uh, have, you ever, have you ever seen a cougar? I haven't, have you? So, well, no, I've seen pictures. I've seen guys that have outdoor cameras up north and they've set sightings in the Oh, you see them in the trees too? Yes, it has been known to see cougars in the trees, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay, so we've got it. Now, th didn't you say that cougars, they attack from trees? That's where they... Yes, that's one of the... Uh, they'll, they'll stay in a tree and they'll attack attack the prey from a pie. Oh, that's yeah. that's dangerous, isn't it? It is, yes, yes. What I want you to do, I'm gonna tear some tin foil here. Now, if you can kind of wrap that around the head and neck. Okay, so why tin foil? Tin foil uh, is easy to mold. Okay. So, shiny side out. I was gonna say shiny side out or? Shiny side out. Oh, just like cooking. You, well, that's, that's in, I want shiny side out. Oh, okay, sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, the thing is with that is that the tape sticks better on the on the on the sunny side. Oh, That's why. so that makes reason. Uh, yeah. that, that sounds reason. Yeah. So just around the stem. Yeah. I can do it. Just, just tell me how to do it. Okay, you just squeeze it hard. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is good. that good? That's perfect. Now what we want to see if that's going to fit in there. So we want to squeeze it really hard. That's why I say squeeze it hard so we can get that fitted. Okay in there, like so, right? All right, so that'll work. Okay. Now what we wanna do too, is now we're gonna form the face of that. I just wanna make sure that that fit in there, okay? Okay. So, what we're gonna do next, is we're actually gonna form the head. Okay. So, while I'm forming the head, let's move this stuff over there, we don't need that, mm -hmm. is that I am going to wrap this around. Shiny side out. Tiny side out, and as I'm wrapping it, now, the cougar's gonna need some ears, right? Okay. So you see how I fold it down like this? And I'm starting to form the ears. So that's what the ears are. That's gonna be the start of the ears. Okay. Now I'm gonna put some more tin foil on, okay? And we're gonna form the, the nose. Okay. Okay, so, more tin foil. As you know, we use a lot of tin foil. I can see that, yeah. It's easy to form, and um, it's almost like a clay. Uh, like, not not like a clay, but it's for forming. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it is, and it holds quite well, too. So mm -hmm. We want to get 
I'm gonna do ears again. So we're gonna bring this up. So just a question, are you recycling old bottles and yep. things like that? Could you use old tin foil you for could. cooking in that? Yeah, you, you could. could. So this is really a total recycling yep. herb project. Absolutely, because we get so much, you know, recycling stuff, why not make art out of yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you see how we got the nose there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're gonna work with that afterwards. We put paper mache on there. We'll work with the ears and everything. So there is part of our cat. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do, almost looks like a fox right now, but it will look like a, a cougar. Okay. Let's put tape across there. All right. Now we are going to form it. Put it on here. Now, Kuga's ears are a little bit more round or something like that. So we have that on here. So what we want to do now is we want to form its chest so we can put the arms and everything on it. More tin foil. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just going to roll this. We'll save that one for later. Okay. I didn't want to roll it. Okay, so what we're going to do... I'm just going to fold it over like that. And we're going to put this around the neck. All right. And just kind of build up the chest and the neck part of it. Okay. And we should do this around it. Because we want a good, healthy looking cougar. Okay, so. <clears throat> What we want to do is the arms. So that's where I'll take this one. Cougars have arms? Well, what do you call them? I think they're called legs, aren't they? Okay, legs. Cougars it's have legs, not have arms. To, we have to be politically correct here when you're describing a, a wild animal, right? And I'm glad you're here because you're the one that knows about them. Well, I, I know a little bit about cougars, you know, the wildlife ones. Yep. So, yeah. So we're going to take that one on here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to get some. You want to uh, tear a piece of um, duct tape. Uh, red, green tape. Red, green tape. That's right. How big? Uh, that should be fine. Oh, we have scissors now. Oh, thank you, Bonnie. That, that was one thing I forgot to get with the scissors. Okay, so what's good about tinfoil, too, when you're making the legs with the tinfoil, you can mold it. The legs to whatever shape you want them to be. Okay. So you can straighten and move these anywhere after. I see. So you're just getting them on there and then you'll you'll maneuver them around. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. So you just want to make sure that it's it's pretty. And that stays quite strong. It, it's pretty strong. And once the paper mache is on, it really gets it gets really I strong. I kind of wondered about that with the, the like the deer that you made, which it makes it stand up, and it's just the tin foil. Yeah. Wow. I'm thinking with your deer, did I use? Yeah, no, I, I used tin foil for that too. Some of them I actually had used um, uh, sticks, and I felt, and I said, you know what, tin foil is so much easier to use. Okay, let's see, this one might be a little bit too. No, oh, it's good. Well, you know, it's starting to look like a. A feline. And like a feline, exactly. Yeah. I'm just going to so need more some tinfoil. more tape, right? I just need more tape, yeah, if you can do that. I just want to tighten this up a little bit in here. Okay. All right, so we'll do another one here. Is that long enough? Sorry. No, Probably. that's good. No, that's good. That's we just good? need just enough. Okay. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to make two legs. So this cougar is just going to be standing. Yeah, it's going to be like, kind like of... Like a cat. Like a cat, Okay, yeah. so it's not sitting on a log or anything like that nope. or up in a tree. Okay. So then we can tape that on, and I'll do another one for the other side. You want, me to, you... Yep. you want me to tape that one on? Yep, you yeah. can tape it on, and I'm going to do another one, and then we have to make the tail. And pretty much it's ready to be... to go to... Uh, okay, so which is the top and which is the bottom? We're going to go like this. That's going to be its... Uh... Oh, okay. See? Okay, so... You can tape that on there. Okay, so we've got this all tin foiled and ready to go. So it's starting to look like a, like right now it more looks like a cat, but we're going to give it some more stronger features. Yeah. What I'm going to get you to do, Mark, is I'm going to get you to 
help me out with this. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is, this is the paper mache glue, mm -hmm. okay? It's made with flour, water, and salt, okay? okay? And so it's two cups flour, two cups, uh, four cups water, and I have salt in it. The salt is, you know, it kills the, the mold so it doesn't smell while it's drying. Okay. You know, it can get pretty stinky if you don't put something like that in. So when you put, you dip it in, you wipe off the glue, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna get you to do the back part. Okay. So put strips this way, and then crisscross it across this way. I call it crisscross applesauce. Okay? okay? Oh, you're yeah. Wow. Okay. okay. I'm gonna work on the face, show the people at home how we work with the face. I'm gonna make this uh, cougar, Kathy the cougar, look a little more scary. Okay. So you dip it in like this. Yeah. Don't worry about getting the table dirty because it's plastic over top of it, okay? But I have to get my hands in there. You have to get your hands in there, yes. So I'm going to, uh, I'm just gonna start working on the head part here. And I need to get this guy, gal, look at, don't get my hand in there. Looking a little more spirit. So is it supposed to stick really good or you got to take the air pockets out? Or how, what do you do? You're doing good. When you, the, when you go across this way, it'll help. But I do all the strips up and you down. You do, first. yes. So what, what got you started doing this stuff? Like, where did you learn about all this? Well, you know, this spring, like we in grade two, we, we did paper mache. I'm sure you did too. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, geez, they must have brought it in afterwards. Well, about five know, or six years later after I started well, school. Well, being your younger brother, maybe that's what happened. Yeah, that, yeah younger, yeah. my foot. But anyway, so we did paper mache then. And you know, this spring, you know, like, you know, I'm always artsy fartsy, always yeah, doing you stuff. Were. You I'm were. always doing stuff. Yeah. And paper mache, um, I had built my gazebo and I wanted, I wanted a parrot hanging from it, right? And um, I couldn't find a parrot, couldn't find a parrot. So I said, heck, I'm just going to make myself one. So I made myself one and I kept going. Mm -hmm. Made myself a fox, kept going. Made my cat, kept going, kept going. A hundred things later, here I am. Yeah. So. So see so the face here. Okay, so I have this going here. So what I want to do is get some little cheekies going here on the cat. So what I'm going to do, I am just going to go in here. I will put a ball there. Okay, and I'm going to get a ball on the other side. Mm -hmm. How's it going? Good. Am, am, I, am I too slow, or is it going no, good? No, you're, you're doing yeah. fine. I thought maybe I had to. No, you just go at your own pace. Okay, good. Slow is is good. There, so see, like I'm just getting these on here just to give it a little more jowls. And you, yeah, and you overlap them too in that. Yeah, right? overlap, exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make the chin a little bit bigger on this. Okay, and... Um, so how long does this take to, uh, to dry all this stuff? Well, it depends how much padding we put on, usually around two days, but because we're in TV land, Poof, it's going to be done. But it does take actually two days, eh? And it, it gets well, really a real shell to it? Yes, it does. It gets a nice hard shell. Mm. Now, the thing is, if it was, uh, you know, when it's really, really warm out, I can put it outside to dry, and um, it won't take as long. So the natural sun dries the it quicker? The natural sun dries it quicker. Mm. But when it's, just, it's inside, if it's rainy or something, it takes a little longer. You can put a fan on it to help it. Okay. I've done that. Should I start going... Yeah, you can start going the other way. Yeah. What would you call that? Crisscross Criss applesauce. Okay. I mean, that's just what I say. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to put the eye on here. And it's just a round little ball. And when this is done and everything, what I'll end up doing is, um, on the next part, is doing the mudding. Mm -hmm. And I go over these and I um, smooth everything out. And uh, you can add stuff with the mud to, uh, to make it thicker. You can make smooth things out, add muscles with it, which we do a lot of. So what I'm doing right now is just putting something over the eye, which is gonna be like the eyelid or the eyebrow on it. And if I put eyelashes on it, that's where the eyelashes will go right on here. You know, this, this kind of makes me feel like a kid again, just getting all mushy and stuff. I think this is fun. Not my place to clean up after, and this is oh, great. Oh, who said not your place to clean up after? Oh, oh, the wife. Okay. You'll be clean helping Will me I? clean up. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, you you start a mess, Oops. you clean up a mess. I remember what the teachers say, you make a mess, you clean it up? Or was that our mother? Oh, it could have been our mother. Oh, yeah, it was probably our mother. 
There we go. So you did this when you were younger. Yeah, we grade did this. Grade two. Grade two is when is we did right? paper mache. They must have uh, introduced that a few years after, uh, after you. So, okay. So with the faces coming along, it's hard to you know to realize that um, what this turns out to be afterwards, yeah. but. It, uh, it's all in, in your imagination of what you use and how you picture it. You know, people say, well, it's not perfect. You know what, art doesn't have to be perfect. It's, like you know, you say beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Art's in the, uh, in the eye of the beholder too. So mm. what, um, it's, it's having the satisfaction of making something on your own and say, yeah. hey, I made this. Yeah. I do have to say, whoever cut these strips did a real fine job, eh? Oh, well, thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Guess, Mark, you cut the strips. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, that yeah. you? No, you're doing Actually, good. That's looking good, isn't No, it? you're doing good here. So see? see what I did on the eyes? Oops, his nose. Oh, so you built the eyes out. That's how you do it. That's how so I do it. So you just crumpled paper and then... Yeah, and put it over top. I need to fix up the chin a bit. Okay, so this one is going to be growling. Okay, so what we do is... A growling, vicious cougar. Yes, is that we kind of push in the tin foil. And I'm going to build up, and uh, it, it, trust me, it will look like it's growling at the end. So now I just kind of want to show them how to get the eyes in that on. Now I can build up the face and make it a little bit more muscly. Okay. Now some of the things is afterwards that we fill out, if we fill out the legs in that, we'll take shredded paper. A and finer, uh, like Yeah, a, okay. and um, we will uh, actually mush that up mm -hmm. and we can put it and build up on the legs and everything on that. So you see how we have all this glue right here? Take your paper. Oh, and use that up? Use it up. Might as well, hey? Okay. Just use it up or else we clean we'll it up. Waste not. That's right. We, we don't want to waste this up. Yeah. Waste this up. We don't want to waste it. Yeah. So we're going to get this all finished up fairly soon here. Okay. Uh, like we'll get this, you and I will finish doing this and um, then we're going to be talking about mudding. Oh, you mean you do something after, after the paint? Absolutely. Oh, I thought you painted it oh, right away. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. So what our next step is, you and I, we're going to be finished doing the paper mache here. And uh, when we come back, this will be done. And we're going to be talking about mudding. And uh, then we'll do some painting. Oh. Okay, so Mark, this is, we've, we've actually, we're going to talk about how we mudded this yeah. and how we actually put on uh, to, to fine tune everything yeah, on here. That, that was an interesting process. Lots yeah. of work, but it was good. Yeah. So what I've done here, what we've done is we've taken this pink putty. It's like wall, drywall. Drywall mud. Yeah. And it's pink. When you put it on, it's pink. You can put it on and I molded the eyes with it and filled it in, built up the legs on here and just let it dry a bit and then I sprayed it and smoothed it out. It just is just great to building up the muscle features and everything on it, filling in places that you want it to fill in and it dries white. So then that is well, oh, you know everything it is dry. dry. Exactly, so even you would know when it's dry, Mark. Yes, yeah. no mistakes there. No oh. mistakes. So hmm. after we do that, what we Don't do. Don't watch this build up, Mark. Well, I know you already did that. Um, is that I have, I didn't really, yeah, I can take one of these, is that it's, um, this is a mixture of paint, flour, and salt, and it's my own little mixture, and it is like a pea soup. I'll paint this, that on over top just to smooth everything out, okay, and give it that finer finish to it so it's smooth, and it helps seal things up. I'll get you to cover that up. Yeah, we don't want to And then that. once that's dry, I spray it with a matte spray. And this, you can spray, this is good spray for spraying on anything like plaster, wood, steel. So this is just a matte finish I sprayed on. Now it's ready, it seals everything up. We're ready to paint. So it's, it's, it's just a sealant. Well, it, it also is it's a clear white just to, it's all the same color. Oh, okay. okay? So that's okay. what we use. So now, this is a cougar. So I've researched 
or we've researched on colors of cougars and everything. Yes. And they're more of a tanny, browny color, right? Yes, in the right time of season they are. Yes. yes. And uh, what are they when it's not right time of season? Well, their, their coats in the winter get a little bit thicker and they get a little lighter color. Oh, but, they do? Yeah, but uh, it's almost like they tan really nice during the summer months. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Good to know. So yeah. we're using acrylic paints, okay? So I am just going to pour some brown in there that we know that's too dark. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to pour some white. Oops. I want another white. I want more white, but we'll have enough. Okay, so then we're going to mix the two. Uh, you're going to be doing that. So we're going to take this and we're going to mix it all together. So that's what I'm doing. The, is you're going to be brown? painting the body. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to pass, squirt a little bit of water in there. Uh, how much? I just, one more. Okay, good. Just to thin it out a bit, because you're going to be doing the whole body. So that's just a change of color. Yeah. A lighter, a lighter tan. Yeah. Or, so a lighter you're going, cougar color. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so yeah. you're going to paint the whole body like that. Okay, the whole so, body. Yeah, I'm going to get you to do that. Okay. Can I get you to paint the face first? The whole, like, do I, I don't The go, whole face. Over the eyes and everything? Over the eyes really? and everything. And that's where I'm going to work on the, uh, show the people how to do the face and everything. Okay. The eyes and that, and um, well, this is kind of easy. You don't have to worry about following lines. No, or I know exactly. Paint the whole thing. Okay, now you need a little bit of black. Okay, you're getting that. Yep. Am I doing all right? Yeah, just uh, go down in here. Okay, well, I'm trying to get his nostril. Or yeah. Am I being too picky? You're, you're being too picky. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is only a half an hour TV show. Oh, okay. <laughs> You want to turn this guy here. Okay, yes, yes. Okay, so that's good. Okay, that's good. so you can do the rest of the body. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, you got paint on me. Sorry. Cougars tend to have a little bit of white through here. Not much, but a little bit of white right through here. So I'm just going to add that into here, okay? Do, do cougars have, uh, like, markings distinguishing them at all? Like, are all cougars the same thing? Or no. do they have special traits from one... Well, I don't really them. know that. No, I don't either. Yeah, that would be something that we could research. I just uh, kind of went off a picture that I got off of Google. Oh, okay. And, uh, and that's how I got mine there. Okay. So actually the nose is a little more pink right here, which I will do it pink. I'm going to see what I do is do the whole eye area here black. And then actually cougars have kind of a yellowy eye. Yes, that's right, they do. Yeah, yeah. so I'm just going to go in here. And then when that dries a little bit, I'll put the yellow over top of it. Okay, so what I want to do, get a little bit of red here. Can you... Another brush? Hmm. Make up your mind. <laughs> it's okay. I'm good. <laughs> well, we won't there already we do that point. <laughs> so we want to make the nose just a little more pink in here. So we'll do a second coat on these to fine tune things. I just want to show the viewers where everything goes. And now the, the, we want to also do a black, get this all black inside the mouth here. I'm just going to turn this just a little bit. And then we'll also do, do the tongue. And black kind of defines this, because this one is actually growling. So we get that in there. And again, we'll fine tune it afterwards, OK? All right. And now I'm going to do the tongue. It's going to be kind of a reddy color. There we go, and we'll get that done. A little more pink there. But just to kind of show you what it's, the coloring and everything on it there. There we go, yeah. okay. Now, usually I would let the eye dry a bit more, but what I like to do just to show, the cougar does actually have kind of a yellowy color eye. If we get a little black in, I don't think it's going to matter. And this is kind of a circle part of it here. So it's kind of a yellow color. Okay. It's going to turn this a bit. And again, we'll go over it again. So you'll do another coat of all this? Oh, absolutely. We will do another coat of all oh, of this. Okay. okay. Um, and again, 
I'm just going to put a little bit of a black iris in here, or pupil, just to show you. The eyes actually is a, like a soul of the painting in that too, so it actually gives life to the, um, to the animal. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, in case you didn't know that. Well, there's lots about cougars I don't know. <laughs> okay, and then also what I always do is put a little white dot there, and that just uh, brings life to it. See how I did it? See? Brings life to it? Oh, yeah, I okay. see, yeah. Okay. So, um, we can turn this around here for you to paint a little bit more over here. Okay. okay. See how Mark's painted the back here? And uh, once the paint is all done and everything on here, what we usually do, I'll take a brush, a really loose fitting brush, and uh, weed brush, it's usually a bigger one, and I'll dab it in black paint. And um, what I'll do is I'll dab it in black paint and then I'll just lightly go over it and it will bring out, it'll just kind of give it that antique rusty, rustic look and it'll show the muscles and everything on it. And um, like when we get back after the break and everything like that, uh, it will have the finished product and you'll see exactly what I mean. So, so, with, so with the painting, you can do that? Bring absolutely, out, oh, I'll, I'll show you afterwards wow. on that. So we're gonna finish painting this and um, when you come back, please come back as you will see Kathy the Cougar in full form. She looks fantastic. You were saying this goes on pink? Yes, and I've done so much drywalling and I've never seen this stuff. You haven't? And you sell no, all the stuff? No, I, I, use, I use other products. <laughs> That should have been on TV. That's it. I need a, uh, here. <laughs> so, Mark, I think Kathy the Cougar turned out really good. Yeah, it, it, it really did, Barb. I'm really impressed. You know what? She is going to look fantastic in your cabin. Cottage, Barb? Ca cabin, cottage, whatever. Uh, you know, but I do want to thank you for coming on my show and helping me out with it. Well, it's been a pleasure, Barbara. Thank you for inviting me, and it was interesting, mm -hmm. and look what we created. It looks great. You know what, and I'd like to thank the viewers, too, for watching the show. Uh, I'd like you guys to stay tuned for the next episode where we will be bearing gifts. So from me to you, handmade with special care by Mutter Bear, until next time, have fun creating your very own paper flare. Bye.